uh, my name is Ilya Verbitsky and I just came to Singapore uh, from the Czech Republic. <laughs> uh, yeah, enjoying your hot weather, by the way. <laughs> And actually, uh, the reason why I want to talk about uh, this topic, uh, web upset talk, is about here in Asia you have so many languages, and uh, yeah, sometimes you really have to use your Google Translator a lot, and yeah, that's the way how you survive. Not Singapore, you know, in Singapore because awesome, everyone speaks English, but like if you go abroad, yeah, sometimes it's hard. And um, basically, uh, I wrote this uh, small application like uh, two years ago, and. Uh, Unfortunately, the speech API did evolve from, uh, in like in two years, so it's still the same. But from the other hand, it still works. Okay, let's uh, get started. Uh, so basically, uh, the app I want to present you is it's something like a Google, Google Translate, but it's open source. Uh, when I started to work on it, I was trying to find an API. So basically, you have like a Google Translation API, you have Microsoft API. And there is Yandex Translate. So basically, the first two uh, you have to pay to use them, and like that knows the, it's yeah. I didn't want to pay for like a homemade project. So and then I tried Yandex uh, Translate API. Yandex is a IT company in Russia, and uh, it's like a Google competitor. And uh, they have free version of uh, the API. So if you don't, if you use it for a non-commercial thing. And if you not exceed, exceed some like uh, how many thousand requests a day you can do, you just go ahead and use it. Uh, the API is uh, really simple. Uh, first, you go to this uh, URL and sign up. Uh, then the, you, get, you get your API key. After that, uh, there are two main APIs. The first one is uh, to get a list of supported languages. Uh, it's not Google, so it doesn't support like all thousand like I don't know hundreds languages we have in the world, but yeah, most common ones like French, German, English, like Chinese, probably, and yeah. So there is like one API call, get languages, and you will get the list of languages, like which dic dictionaries are there. Uh, after that, there is an another call. So basically, you can type in in any language. Uh, I know something in German, and then uh, the API can uh, detect your language based on your content. So another really simple call. And yeah, and uh, if it doesn't know, so you can give you like, okay, it's like a probability 60% is English and probability is like 50% uh, is like German, whatsoever. Okay, and after that, like the final step is to translate the text. Again, that's uh, another API call, just translate and from what language to what language and send you text and you get the response. So that's like the first part uh, of the uh, API. And uh, then we are going to the uh, web speech API. So I have a dream. Uh, I, like, after I watch this um, Iron Man, like the first Iron Man movie, I really want to have this flat. <laughs> and uh, like two years ago, we didn't have Alexa and um, like commonly available and uh, uh, other speakers. So I was playing with web speech API because it was probably the easiest framework that you can just go and use. If you, of course, if you don't want to uh, deal with like uh, uh, app or iOS, if you're not iOS developer or Android developer, so probably it was almost the only option. And uh, so WebSpeech API, um, it's a still a draft, so it's, it's not a standard yet, it's not approved. That's why it's not supported by all major browsers. And uh, it has a few components. Um, the first one is a speech recognition component. So that's basically, uh, when you when you say something, uh, you can use a mic uh, on your laptop, and uh, uh, this component will be able to recognize your speech and convert to text. And uh, another big component, like speech synthesis component, that's basically a text-to-speech uh, API. So you can send any text, and it will talk to you. And yeah, there are some helper APIs. So this is a demo, and uh, if you want to play around uh, with, with this app, just go ahead, download it, and like uh, play with it. And so let, let's go to the code. So this is my like my demo, and um, the demo has basically two main methods. You can do recording, and you can do speech. So when you do recording. Uh, First, you uh, you have to choose a language. Actually, let me run it first. 
it'll be easier. So we do CT. So basically, this is like a really, really simple thing, and uh, you can uh, you can re start recording. Hi, how are you doing? Nope, oh, and something doesn't work. Oh gosh, I'm out of internet. Do we have an inter Do we have Wi-Fi here? Because I need API. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's why you want to do like a real app, just go ahead and build it on the iOS. They have it built in. <laughs> no. oh. Yeah, that's what happens when you have, don't have internet nowadays. <laughs> There's a proxy login page. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Here we have languages. Oh. Yeah, we have languages. Awesome. <laughs> So let's try again. Hi, how are you doing? Yep, so it works. And then I can translate it to, I know, Russian. Translate. And read. Oh. And then I can French. <laughs> like French. Slate. Oh, something with sound. Yeah, no, I don't think that's you. I think it's the speakers. Oh, okay. So, anyway, how it works, uh, and uh, the API is like a really simple one. Uh, basically, when you do your recording, uh, you have to choose your language. So it will be probably E N D E F R, and then you just um, have your own result handler. So this func uh, this um, event handler is called when uh, Chrome is able to recognize like uh, text. And then you just click start, and it will start recording your voice. And then when you in your event handler, you have a result, and in, inside the result, uh, Chrome will give you different options. So it counts the probability. So probably this text means that. And then you can just uh, join them all together. Uh, and for uh, uh, for translation, like when you okay, so it's a translation. When you want to for the speech, okay, let's see. let's see. Yeah, for speak, for speech, uh, it's uh, like even easier. But there is a hack. Uh, you have to uh, first. Chrome has to load uh, voices. It has built-in voices for different languages. Uh, but if you call this function in like window speech voices, uh, not uh, inside like a timeout, but uh, right after like the function call, it will return you now. So uh, for some like for like there is a bug or hack in Chrome. So you must call this uh, get voices uh, inside set interval method. And uh, then you just choose your voice and uh, uh, create this object. This is like a speech generator that gets your text. And uh, you also provide the voice for your language and do speak, 
like really simple and straightforward. So we go back here. So unfortunately, this API uh, is not like approved to the standard, so it's not supported by all browsers. But uh, yeah, now this is mostly work from home. But as you can see, we have 63% of coverage. Like two years ago, it was 40 something. So it means Chrome is growing a lot. Here we go. Thank you. Coverage? Oh. Oh, it's all right here, 63%. So basically, you can use it for Samsung Internet. It means it's like a Chromium, probably, and then Chrome on Android and Chrome. And uh, under the hood, the speech API uses, um, uh, I think it's the same uh, L, um, language and like speech engine that you use on Android, basically. And uh, if you are on Google Cloud, so probably they have an API that you can use I know, in your normal applications, like desktop or mobile, whatever. Yeah, I hope they will add, add it to Safari. Any other questions? Yeah, one question. Sure. So when you're calling, you're somehow calling a function from your Microsoft Voice, it seems so. Does it mean that does your code work on Mac OS? I'm sorry? Does your code work on Mac OS? Yeah, yeah, you have to, like, um, you have preset, like, preset voices. Like, voices are part of uh, the speech engine from Google. Mm -hmm. And you have set of voices. And uh, each voice is associated with a particular language. So then you just, you load voices first. It's some sort of like a voice API. And then, uh, yeah, you have, and then you have this, uh, uh, then you have this class. Uh, that is responsible for speech synthesis, and uh, yeah, it must ha it must have a voice to be able to s produce something. they work in this so basically I'm originally from Russia so I know Yandex <laughs> and I, I know guys from Yandex so uh, they just they have like a developer portal I think like, like developer.yandex.org and they have all bunch of APIs they have like mapping they have voice recognition they have some machine learning and stuff so it's quite like if you have time and uh, interested just go and take a look I guess uh, translation API is a really, really strong one, yeah. And uh, the map, they have a really good map. And uh, I know that they, they probably, I know, I'm not, I don't know for Yandex, but I think they're working um, a lot now with Asian markets. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what, what they'll come from. Like, but you know, if you're in Russia and you're driving, then the Yandex maps is just a go-to solution. <laughs> Thank you very much.